Thank you very much for having me here. It's really quite a privilege and honor to be here on the panel. We are all interconnected. So Yaakov speak about uh, the right to the temple, mountain prayer, and Harry talking about the Ark of Covenant. And now I have a special breed of sheep. <laughs> and people ask me all the time, you know, Gil, when are you coming up with your book? It's going to be a bestseller. Well, I have news for everybody. I'm not even started yet. We have so much more to go. So, I believe the best way to describe the Jacob sheep in their role in the future is to understand their link to the past. Mm -hmm. Jacob sheep are an animal of blessing. For 2,000 plus years, the Jewish people wandered around this earth without their national animal. But our forefathers were all shepherds. Most biblical Jews were shepherds. In fact, all our ancient leaders had some tie to shepherding and were shepherds themselves. How can we possibly have a country without sheep in it? <laughs> the importance of Jacob's sheep are very, very clear in Genesis 30 and 31. Now, if the Jacob sheep weren't important, ask yourselves, why does a Tanakh dedicate a full chapter to the creation of the sheep? Now, obviously, that would be an important reason, right? The spots, the speckles, the ankle bands, you know, the animals got involved and it makes the sheep, and they produced more spot and speckle, then Laban got very envious because he lost all his flock, became Jacob's, and then etc. etc. Well, Jacob's sheep story continues from there. Jacob's sheep originally went down to Egypt, as it says in Genesis. Uh, Jacob took his flock down to Egypt, so they were likely the, Jacob, they were the flock involved in the Passover story. But it doesn't stop there. You know, the, the prophets um, very, very clearly mention an important flock. Um, Ezekiel 34 talks about, you know, the dispersion of a flock and then its return later on and then the coming of Messiah. Jeremiah mentions in several places not only the, the flock of glory being dispersed, but eventually the need of not only the seed of man or seed of human beings, but the seed of animals to return to the land for blessing to be complete. So why have the cup half full? Now it's fully full. You know what I'm saying? So where do we go from here? Well, it's sort of an ingathering of sheep. You know, talk about ingathering of people. So now we well, sheep also. <laughs> Jacob sheep need to be fruitful and to multiply. We have 32 lovely cute lambs that are being born to us. First time since the time of the prophets likely that we've had these cute lambs. Now we do have a name a lamb campaign that's going on right now. We've got about 600 shekels. Very lovely to pick a name and your lamb can, you know, pick a name and pick for it. It could be, you know, in honor of someone. Or you just come and have a look at the cute lamb and say, I want to name that one. Anyway, so that's the beginning. The Jacob sheep to be fruitful and multiplied. But more importantly, the Jacob sheep need to spread. As it's written in Ezekiel, the Jacob sheep are going to be everywhere. They start at the mountaintops and they go down to the ravines and all the lands habitations. So we want to expand them. They're going to be grazing the mountains and forests of Israel. And to that, we are starting to, to form partnerships with our agencies such as the KKL, the Jewish National Fund. And we'll try to approach the Israel Park Authority as well. Uh, obviously, we'll need to work on getting some more shepherds. Um, but our goal is eventually to have flocks of spotted and speckled four-horned sheep eating grass all over our wonderful country. Amen. And the goal of that isn't just because it looks really beautiful. Because that is what the prophets say. And, as the rabbis say, whoever raises sheep is blessed, but to have sheep graze in your, feet, in your fields is a source of major blessing. So if you are blessed to have sheep graze fields, why not extend that to the whole nation of Israel? More importantly, there has to be an educational awareness of the sheep. Most Israelis that come to me, they say, ah, oh, this is an interesting project. Meet or milk. They basically tell me, are your sheep going to go for shekita, or are they going to be turn into dairy animals? I tell them, look, these animals are a major source of blessing. These animals were raised by the patriarch of Jacob because they are blessed. The more of them exist, the more blessed the country is. Why would he want to take an animal that adds blessing to the country and eat it? <laughs> and we know most Jews don't eat that much land anyway. <laughs> so, slowly and slowly, more people coming, more people are understanding that, you know, the sheep have to be fruitful and multiplied. There has to be more of them. In the next 50 years, there will be a lot more of them. We're hoping thousands and tens of thousands of them. 
and the, really the vision of Ezekiel and Jeremiah, the one day there really will be flocks of sheep all over our wonderful country with shepherds taking care of them as they till the grass and eat the grass will become a reality. And lastly, the Jacob sheep has to be our national animal. They're the only animal that is mentioned in the Tanakh being born alongside us. Why not have it again? You know, the Israel has a Canaanite dog. They have a type of bird that's so national, but you know, there's no biblical link to the bird. You know, it's just, it's just there. The Jacob sheep is very much ingrained in our Tanakh. And one day we hope, with the aid of our Knesset, to have it our national animal and to have special protected status. Yeah. Yeah.